It was always my dream to be an author. Writing this book was so tough. It was not sexy. Horrible reviews. I just cannot read the book. It is not the big things that make you happy. Oh, we are getting honest today. I think all of us can relate to having a big goal, a big dream or a bucket list item that we feel like we are pursuing. When I was 16, it was to do well in my GCSEs. When I was 17, it was to have a successful YouTube channel. And I guess for the last two years, it has been to write a successful book, the book that I felt like I needed when I was doing my exams in secondary school. Last year in August, 2021, I'm so proud to say that I published this book, the book that I felt like I needed, the book that I was so passionate about to help students feel less stressed during exam season, to know the study and revision strategies that you just don't get taught in school, to combat perfectionism, to have the right mindset and to get the best grades possible so that, you know, all students can flourish in whatever life path they want to take, whatever university you want to go to, whatever job you want to pursue, grades are a means to the end of the life that you want. And between August and December of last year, I sold over 10,000 copies. It became a bestseller on Amazon in Waterstones. It was the most sold book in Waterstones in Amsterdam. All these crazy achievements. I receive messages every day from people saying that this book has helped them and transformed their student life in some way. And yet having written a best-selling book was not everything that I thought it would be. Today I'm going to talk a bit about the expectations I have for this book, why I wrote it, the challenges I faced, and how I feel about it now. And this is a brutally honest video and I hope it helps anyone who is looking to be an author or to pursue a large goal. Because I think there are two distinct things to understand. One is the process of trying to achieve your goal and the second is once the goal has been achieved. And I think we often have misconceptions about this second one. Okay, so why I wrote this book. I already told you a bit about the premise of the book and why that was important to me. But more generally, the medium of writing and books. The first job I ever wanted to have as a child was to be an author. I have a wordy brain. I just like words. I would read a lot, I would always write stories, I just would write reams and reams and reams of paper until my dad gave me his old laptop when I was eight. And I swear Microsoft Word was my best friend. I wrote a hundred thousand word book about an arctic fox cub who meets a husky puppy in the wilderness. I wrote fanfic when I was 14. I just love writing. And it was always my dream to be an author, although actually a fiction author rather than non-fiction. And then I ended up kind of creating this study tube thing on YouTube and that was really not part of my my life plan and I realized I was really passionate about academia and helping people do better in school and discussing revision methods and all of this stuff that I just never never imagined I would get into and as my channel grew and I had all this advice accumulating that I knew was helping people it was always in the back of my mind that I wanted to create a resource that was more comprehensive than what you can do with scattered videos where people might not watch all of them like the medium of a book allows people to digest content differently to build on ideas. And so sometimes in my journal, I would write practice paragraphs of what I would want in my dream book on this topic. In my gap year, just for fun, I wrote a chapter by chapter plan of the book and everything I would want to include. I just wrote random parts, but I was enjoying myself so much on my travels. I was prioritizing YouTube, all this other stuff. I was prioritizing trying to get into uni that I sort of let go of the idea of writing this book. But early in the summer of 2020, I was contacted by a wonderful small publisher with someone at the publishing house who really believed in what I did with my channel and how it could help young people. And they basically pitched me a book almost identical to the one that I had been wanting to write all those years. So it just felt like all these jigsaw pieces coming into place and I knew I had to write it. But the way the publishing world works is they do market predictions for the exact best time to release books on certain subjects. And they're basically like, you need to write this book in eight months the eight months that you are at university, at one of the most stressful universities ever, where I'm gonna be moving to both South Korea and Germany during that whole time. But yeah, if you wanna write it, we'll support you. And that's how I ended up signing a book contract and entering into this process of writing a book and building up expectations for what I wanted this to be and how I wanted it to help people. Even though I love writing, writing this book was so tough mentally and physically because I would be writing like two uni essays a week and half a chapter, sometimes a whole chapter of my book every week and having calls with an editor, but also doing like six uni classes a week and moving country. It was just 
the time. <laughs> and it's so easy now that the book is written to romanticize the process, when in reality, I know that I really did not enjoy most of it. I wanted to give up again and again. I would read back what I've written and hate it. I considered taking a gap year from uni to manage it all. I dreaded check-in calls from my editor because it would be like, you know, I have two days left and I've not even started the chapter rewrites that I need to do. It was not sexy. It was not a sexy writing adventure. It was a lot of time. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of self-doubt and yeah, I guess that's actually how most projects, most life dreams actually happen. Like it's not easy. And so having published it, regardless of its success or not, was this immense feeling of accomplishment and relief just because of how stressful that process was. So speaking to expectations, I've talked a lot with Ali Abdal, my good friend and fellow YouTuber who is also writing a book. I never expected this to be a bestseller because it's the most niche thing ever. Study guide, like, come on, you're targeting like, I don't know, a really small subset of students and it's not like a sexy title. And like once you pass the age, you know, you don't need the book anymore. So I wasn't expecting it to pop off on the New York Times bestseller list. But of course you entertain the idea of what it would be like for people to really like this book and to really need it and feel impacted by it and for it to do numerically well. And you do just feel this pressure from the many eyes of the YouTube world. And even though, hi, yes, you, you are wonderful and I'm sure you're just a lovely person, but collectively when there's this many of you, it's just kind of scary. And you also entertain the thought of having put in all this work only to get horrible reviews and people hating it and slating it and or no one reading it. And so I really had to change my expectations from, you know, wanting it to do numerically well or being so scared that it was just gonna <laughs> fail miserably. And instead I really tried to settle on the idea of, I just want to help one person. I want someone's academic life to be improved by this. I want this advice, which was the advice that I needed to hear, to land with someone. And suddenly it seems like a much more realistic goal. And it's so crazy because the book ended up being far more successful than like little old me could have expected. I get messages every single day, which is just so mind blowing to me and means so much. I get tagged in stories of people reading the book. I get lengthy paragraphs about how this has changed someone's mindset towards learning. My cousins got it for Christmas, which is just so cute and surreal. I've watched videos of people crying to receive my book, which like makes me cry because I'm very emotional. I've seen it in shops, which is insane. I've seen it number one bestseller in Amsterdam Waterstones. All these insane metrics, which I didn't expect to accompany, you know, what really was for a lot of the time, like a Notion page on my laptop. And yet, here's I guess the juicy bit of the video. How do I feel now? I, I can't read it. <laughs> I just cannot read the book really. Like I struggle a lot with perfectionism and I talk about this within the book. Yeah, it's like, it's hard to read the chapter and be like, oh, I would change this or I would add this. And obviously I can't make changes now. And I see the finished book and it just doesn't feel like it's mine. Like it's this weird experience. You see it in a shop and like, I almost, don't feel anything real because it just doesn't really connect to me that like that's my thing. It's just, I don't know, this whole YouTube world also I feel similarly, like I'm just talking to a camera in my room, you know, and then all of a sudden I get recognized on the street in London and someone knows all about my life. Like these things are so hard to comprehend. And yeah, I have a lot of imposter syndrome with it. Like, oh, why did you think you could write this book, Jane? Oh, someone could do it better and, Oh, I don't know, all this really unnecessary self-doubt stuff, which regardless of the numerical success of it, and as I say, like people genuinely saying it's helped them, I still have that feeling towards the book. And that's what I really want to speak to in this video is you can do something which on paper looks amazing. Like, oh, I'll publish a book at 2021. Like that's amazing. And yet still not feel amazing about it. <laughs> and then this brings me to a much bigger reflective topic of my life, which is what next? I think we all feel this pressure in this hustle culture system, capitalism, especially like YouTube grind world where people are always like making projects and doing cool things to 
always be working on something. It's like you reach these incredible life milestones and so much of your life is gearing up to achieving them. And then you achieve them. And then you revel in the success of being an author and then your life is just done and you just don't need to do anything. Like, no, my life is the same. I still write essays for uni. I still struggle with similar mental health challenges. I'm still a student. I'm still a friend. I'm still the same person. Books also aren't as financially incredible as you might imagine. Like, you think, oh, I'll write, I'll publish a successful bestseller and I'll be rich. But like, the publishing industry... You don't write a book for money. <laughs> yeah, and so it's kind of like lacking purpose as well. It, it's a feeling of needing another large project, even though I, I'm already so busy and I value rest. <laughs> and coming to some more brutal honesties, I sometimes feel numb to success. It's so funny because if I compare how I felt when I got my first 1,000 subscribers at the age of, what, was I 16, 17? how elated I felt, how I ran around the house, you know, showing all my family members the number and being like, this is so hard to imagine, like a oh, thousand people watching my stuff, to how I feel now when I go from 697,000 to 698,000. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen my impossible list video, but so many of my impossible bucket list items for life, I achieved before I was even 21, which is insane and so cool and so privileged and like, I'm just, I'm, pr I'm so proud of myself. But it does make success as a concept change. Like the bar changes, you've experienced the success before. Like I've been on TV, I got good grades, oh, videos go viral, people recognize me. <laughs> oh, she wrote a book, like all these, these things. And it puts weird pressure on life because I want to keep striving for goals, but then I don't know, the success of them just doesn't feel the same necessarily. And this is why I focus so much on casual magic because ultimately it is not the big things that make you happy. It is not having published the book. It is not clicking onto my YouTube channel and seeing the number of subscribers I've got today. Instead, it's all the tiny things of mundane days that make life worth living. It was me going to the same writing cafe in Seoul every time I wrote a new chapter of my book and that first taste of good coffee from the guy who would always smile at me and make me feel good on the day. It was coming home to flatmates who supported me and us having long chats about life. Like all of those things I came to value so much more than just whatever tangible output I would have made at the end of the day. And what I've also realised so much more is I get so much more value from feeling like I'm being of service and creating a positive impact and learning more about myself so that I can inspire other people to do the same. Like that stuff matters more than bestseller lists and numbers. Yeah, so it's just a weird one. Um, Cause in a world where we're just trained to, to seek that, that hustly success, when you achieve it, it actually makes you reevaluate what success is. If you're striving for something, you are incredible and please keep going. Please channel yourself into creating something meaningful that you think this world needs. Like everyone's voice is worthy in this world. But at the same time, don't attach yourself to your expectations for the outcome of how you're gonna feel when this thing is completed because the odds are it's not gonna be quite as incredible as you might have desired. Instead, fall in love with parts of the process, parts of the everyday, the people who support you in it, like all of these little things that are so easy to overlook because um, they're what you remember when it's all done. So at least in my case, achieving one of my dream life projects did not change who I am, didn't change my life really. It didn't really elevate me to any crazy new status. I'm still just Jade. But then did I really want that? Probably not. So I'm um, still just me. <laughs> Comment me a book emoji if you got to this point. Basic, but cute. And I'll come and I'll sprinkle some love to you, especially if you're a prospective author or you're working on a project, then let me give you some inspirational words. Bye.